It's Monday time. Everybody, welcome back to the show. It's coffee time, too. Oh, bumping things with my knees. Trying a little different angle. Show off some stuff. Anyway, welcome back to Airsoftology Q&A show. It's Monday. I guess we'll keep calling it Mondays. Why not? I'm going to get this out on Mondays. And I just realized something. It is show number 200. I have done 200 Monday episodes. I think I've only missed like a couple a year. So that's like almost four years worth of money. Golly, it's a long time. I can't believe I've been doing this for so long. So yes, welcome back to the show. I really genuinely thought I'd run out of questions in about like episode, I don't know, maybe like 20, 50? And here we are at 200. Wow. Anyway, I'm gonna fill this thing full of questions. Hang on though, real quick. I got something for you. Don't forget. Make yourself great again patches. Almost gone. I can't believe that. That's kind of crazy. Plus, I got a lot of other cool stuff in the shop, like some logo patches, things like that. I got corgis. I got so I just got a lot of cool stuff in the web store. Check it out. Links in the corner. It helps support the show and get you some cool swag at the same time. Free shipping worldwide, so don't worry about it at all. Um, also, got some. These are my teasers for upcoming reviews. You guys have probably seen that and. Do you know what that is? Do you, do, you, do you know? I know you, you might probably know what that is, but who makes it? Anyway, put your comments down below. I'm curious you guys know what that is and, and what it's going to be. Anyway, enough of all that. Let's dive on into what you're really here for, and that is your questions in the Tipman mail call. Pirate Ship Productions writes, Went to my first game and did an unplanned tactical flop. My buffer tube is now quite wobbly, and I was wondering if that could be easily fixed, or is it a permanent damage to the lower? I've tried tightening the tube down with the proper tools, but that didn't work. Crytek LVOAC, by the way. All right, so on the buffer tube, you're talking about like the stock and the two. Hang on, I got one over here somewhere. Here we go, in the package, buffer tube awesomeness. All right, so inside the buffer tube, oh man, this has got a cap on it. Anyway, there's a screw you can hear in here and it's kind of like right inside there. So inside there is a screw here on the buffer tube and the way the buffer tube works is it screws into the back of your lower receiver just like bloop back there and then the stock, where did I put it, right here, goes right over top of it, right? That's how the buffer tube works. Um, on the Airsoft one, this is AEG, I'm assuming because you said Crytek LVOAC in your question. So what has probably happened is you have stripped the screw that's in here or you strip the threads on the inside. Now on the Crytac, you're screwing, I'm almost certain on this one, help me out, uh, into the spring guide on that one. Are you? No, maybe in the receiver. God, it's been a while since I looked back at Crytac. Please, you tech geniuses out there. Either way, you probably strip the threads on one of these or unfortunately both. So first thing I would do is grab another one of these screws that are, I wish I could get the screw out on this. I didn't plan this very well out. Um, get the uh, the scrub before I show you. You can probably pick up one of those screws just about anywhere. There's no cracks in your receiver, you're probably good. So unscrew it, take a look at it, take the screw out of this and just try to thread it all the way in. I think it might, if it goes into the spring guide that's inside the receiver, in there, you can pop the spring guide out, and the Crytek is quick change. You can pop it out and then you can replace that piece. That's cool, if not you can replace the screw you, um, I don't think on the Crytac it screws into the lower receiver. If it does, you're gonna have to get a low, uh, yeah, and you can't really find those, and it's gonna be tough. That stinks. But hopefully it's just the screw or just the, the spring guy where it screws into. You should be good. So check those out again. It's like try that because that part is like almost every airsoft shop is gonna have one. You can buy this. This is one I've got for my my Virgo build. I've been working on over here. Um, I think this is like a VFC one because it's Virgo. I wanted it to match, but. Any of these are gonna work for you. You can pick up these at pretty much any shop, online shop. I know like Evic and all of them have them on site and, and all that. I mean, I, I can even add a link down below if that, you know, kind of make it easy on you. But make sure that's the right part. Um, you don't need the whole tube. You just need the screw on the inside. So maybe check with a local shop. They might have some extra screws. You can buy one for super cheap off of them. It's like, oh, it's like, hey, I just need a screw. If you're super nice, they may give you one. Chances are maybe it's like a couple dollars. You can walk out and be good to go. May need a spring guide. If so, I'm pretty sure you can pick those up from Crytac. And I know Evic being the distributor in the United States for Crytac will carry those parts for you. Alex H writes, Chay Jonathan, I run an aim sport lens protector to protect my red dot. Is it really necessary to have it or are my chances of getting my optic shot out so small that it's not necessarily to have a lens protector? Leave it on. Trust me, from a guy who's, I probably had five, four or five 
optic shot out in my airsoft career. So do yourself a huge favor. I have lens protectors now for everything I run because I don't wanna get my stuff shot out. Um, do yourself a favor and keep that on there. It is absolutely worth it. You're like, well, it's never been shot, man. I don't, why do I need it? Yeah, you need it. Trust me, you need it. Uh, the, you'll take it off and like that'll be like the golden BB that hits it and shatters it like the next game. And you'll be like, ah, why didn't I just, oh, just trust me. Leave it on. One day you'll find like a BB hit on it. You'll be like, ah, worth every penny. So yes, please leave it on. It's worth it. In fact, if you guys aren't running these, you probably should. In fact, the video, the recommendation of the week, uh, and this one coming up just to kind of foreshadow even, uh, you can see a shot out optic right in that. I mean, it didn't happen in the video, but it's already shot out. So uh, yeah, it's actually a pretty common occurrence. I've seen so many of these happen. And I've had, like I said, I've had EOTech, I've had a lot of stuff shot out. Anyway, leave it on and you one day will be very glad you did. Steven Lopez, AKA DJ Hellboy writes, Hey Jonathan, I was thinking about getting another pistol for second use, but use two as I play, the one I have now and the one I would get. What do you think? If you want to do the akimbo thing, it's kind of cool. You can do a New York reload. If you know what that is, it basically instead of reloading this one, you just put it away and grab your second pistol. Doesn't require a reload until you have to reload that one. Um, but for me, if I'm gonna buy a second, okay, if I'm brand new to Airsoft, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna get out and play. I've got my AG or my primary and I got a pistol. Um, this seems cool, but it's not. That's a lot more efficient and accurate. I mean, you can do it and you can kind of, you can only look one direction, right? Yeah, it doubles your firepower, but it doesn't double, work on the accuracy thing. For me, this is just my honest opinion. It's an opinion, again, you can take it or leave it. That's totally cool, that's what the show's about. Um, I would get a second AEG. Guns break, things go down. Um, uh, a pistol's fun unless you play nothing but CQB indoors and then you know your pistol could be your main. But if you're playing like most style airsoft, having a second main gun is mm, a better investment. One, you can loan it to friends, although they never treat your stuff as good as you will. Um, or two, uh, you never know when your main one's gonna go down. You may have a problem. Something as simple as like a bucking gets ripped uh, inside of it and you can just grab the other one and not waste a day. Think about what your day is. You gotta drive to the field, you gotta pay admission, you gotta buy all these things and be and the, the time, like charging batteries and loading magazines and uh, having a second gun so your day is not ruined is huge. So I give it the option, I'd say do, go get the AEG, but if you just wanna do the Akimbo thing, man, like just go ham and just waste people and do the don't, just do it, man. Never let anybody tell you how to play this hobby and sport, man. Just do what you want. Do what you love. That's what I do. And it's just like people have opinions everywhere. But, man, if it's the cool thing you want to do, freaking do it. I've tried it. It's not as cool as it sounds <laughs> in practice because you just can't, like, I'm, I'm much more of, like, two hands on one and, and get those shots. Anyway, just my thought. And uh, let me know what you end up doing after it's all said and done. Hudson McGath writes, hey, Jonathan, can the boxes the guns come in be used as a gun case to safely travel the guns around? Um, for shipping, yeah, you can tape them up. And for airplane rides, no. There's different requirements in the United States, at least. So just make sure you're following those. But we're talking about these guys, right? This is the, the box for that one right there, the F1. Um, so I already gave away what it was. <laughs> yeah, thanks for watching this far in. Um, so this is a pretty darn good box. Now, some of these will have a picture of the gun on them somewhere. Let's see, this one does not. Good, it's just like a barcode, right? And that is perfect. That's what you want. That's a good one. That's nice and covered up. No one will know what the heck F1 is. Um, if it says firearm or gun or rifle, you might just throw some tape over top of it. Not to scare anybody. I mean, you wanna make this as friendly as possible. But uh, yeah, they work fantastic. Just make sure to like have a way to tape it shut so it doesn't come apart and pff, there's your gun on the subway or in public and things like that and it could be a big problem. Um, but if you do that, I do that all the time. I only have so many rifle cases and I usually bring a lot of stuff and I will double up these and it's a good way to keep it out of the public eye. But remember, if the box says M4, rifle, sniper rifle, assault rifle, whatever the heck it is on or a picture of a gun, don't use that one. You can turn these boxes inside out fairly easily. In fact, most of these you can take and you can kind of like disassemble. Let me see if I can get this one here. All right, so this one is glued in with this lip here, but some of these are just kind of like flipped over and locked in. This one's a little better made. This is the EMG box. EMG boxes tend to be a little like over-engineered actually. Um, but if you get like some of the other ones, like I've got a Tipman one over there, you can turn it inside out and it just becomes a tan box. Like literally you disassemble it and you fold it back the little origami way. 
opposite, so all the printing is on the inside, and then it's perfect. It's just a tin box. Nobody knows what it is. So yeah, try that, and that should work out, and yeah, you're totally good. And then when you get the chance to invest in a good rifle bag, just go for it then. Be a Viking writes, hey Jonathan, hope you had a good birthday. I just wanted to ask, does anyone know whatever happened to Milsom Junkie? I loved his videos, and then he just dissipated. Thanks. Thanks for the birthday wishes. Yeah, it was a, uh, not so momentous one, just low key this year. Anyway, but anyway, thank you everybody for your birthday wishes last week. Um, but, and you guys asked what my birthday was, August 4th, by the way. I think there's some people asking there what, what day of the uh, year it was. Anyway, um, on that, Milsom Junkie, I know um, Arwen, uh, a good friend of mine, Arwen has moved on to the firearms world, actually moved on to the tactical boot world. And then I don't know where he moved on after that. I need to reach out to him and talk. Yeah, I mean, he kind of, you know, like was doing airsoft and then got a marketing job with a uh, SWAT boots, I think, original SWAT boots. And then from there he moved on to, I'm not sure where he moved after that. But um, yeah, he was doing like marketing manager for that and doing all their social media and all their marketing posts and everything like that. Super cool job to go from YouTuber to like taking that YouTube experience and becoming like the big marketing guy for a company and then going on with your career. Yeah, it sucks we all lost him as a YouTuber. I'd love to see him again. I, I, he's such a positive dude. Like I remember watching his first videos and just He's always so positive and I love that about him. Just always like everything so happy and cheery and just, and that's the way he is in real life. Super cool dude. And I do see him every year at SHOT Show and I wonder if he's gonna be back this year. I'm gonna have to reach out. I'll, I'll keep you guys posted on the updates and maybe, just maybe, we can get a little uh, cameo action from him coming up soon. Anyway, uh, that's it. And yeah, that's kind of where Milsim Junkie went. It's a shame. By the way, if you guys wanna check it out, I'll put Milsim Junkie's channel down there below. He's got a lot of old content, but super good stuff. Still holds up, a lot of gameplay, a lot of third person gameplay, like following guys, super cool angles. Really kind of opened the genre for a US uh, gameplay channel and like he was like the leading guy. I mean he'd be like over a million subs right now Guaranteed to be kept with it. So anyway, um, yeah, but check him out and uh, throw it a sub over there Even though he's not really on the channel anymore. It's still worth the watch. Moose here soft writes Hey Jonathan, which one is better for a sniper HPA or spring? So I've tried both uh, in the form of the mancraft kit for HPA and then of course spring I have had personally the best experience with a consistent sniper rifle with a spring Everyone's gonna have a different experience. Everyone's gonna have different opinions. I've used a lot. I've owned APS-2. I've had you know, countless sniper rifles. I've got a few more on the way. And I might even be doing some gameplay, getting on the old sniper gameplay bandwagon maybe, but this is from a noob approach. It's been so long since I've done it. Um, but uh, I, I, my experience has been on the spring side. Now, I'm curious to see what some of the new makers are coming out with. I like the idea of the bolt just being Super easy. The bolt, the downside for the spring is just uh, to get that power. It's like a really strong spring. It just takes a lot of strength. And if you're not doing it right or you don't have the upper body strength, maybe you're not fully developed or whatever, then you may not have a comfortable long day of airsoft. You may be like, oh God, my arm's tired after a while. But um, for the HPA, you don't have that problem. But there is, I don't know with HPA, just sometimes you got to tune it just right. Uh, to get everything perfect and happy. But uh, my experience, I've, I've messed with the Minecraft. It was installed correctly. It was a good system. I still like the spring. Personal opinion, personal flavor. If you guys are running things uh, like the Wolverine Bolt, and you have a good experience with the Bolt. In fact, I saw it was released and I don't really see much gameplay. If you watch, here's a good example. If you watch all the big sniper airsoft channels, nobody's running like a Wolverine Bolt or anything like that. Uh, I'm not saying it's bad technology. I think it's awesome. I love it. I love the idea of it. I, I've shot the Minecraft. I've not shot the Bolt, so I cannot give you any opinion, good or bad, on that. I'm just saying, it, I, just, I just don't see the big YouTubers doing it. So there's got to be something to it, considering the HPA would be even more quiet, more stable on camera, and probably provide a better experience because it's easier to pull the Bolt back. But uh, that's it. Maybe I'm going to kind of talk to somebody. Maybe I'll get somebody big's opinion about which one's better. I don't know. We'll come back on the next video, and maybe I'll have something cool for you guys. All right, that's it for questions this week, which means it is time for the Code Red Headsets video recommendation of the week. And this one comes from Daniel Rademacher. And uh, he even threw the H in there. I hope that's right. Is that the correct H? Or is it H? I don't know. Anyway, he says, hey, Jonathan, next viewer video. I want to submit my buddy teammate, Hidden Viper. Now, this channel is pretty darn cool. And I love the fact you're asking about uh, DMR and HPA sniper rifles. Well, here's a HPA DMR instead of a sniper rifle. In this case, you got some gameplay out here of it. And we did talk about the broken optic earlier here. So we got full circle. Two previous questions that are almost answered here in this video. Now, this is DMR gameplay, so it's semi-automatic. 
um, but you have higher power, but that minimum engagement distance with a DMR or designated marksman rifle. I wanted to throw this out there. Um, good channel, great gameplay, below a thousand subscribers, and I think another underrated channel. He used to post a lot, he's not posting too, too much nowadays, but I think we can encourage him a little bit uh, with some, some of the old sub button mashes, uh, but he still is actively posting. That's one thing that I do have a requirement, so I'm not gonna share a channel that's not actively posting here on this channel. And we're like, hey, go check this channel out, and by the way, it's a dead channel and nobody's posting there anymore. It's important for me to do that. If you guys want your channel on here, it's super simple. Put it in the comment section below. Self-promote, that is totally cool. In fact, I, I know there's a couple of you guys. There's one that's like super long running. I promise I will get to you guys on this one. Um, just keep being consistent and being persistent. Persistent, I think more than consistent down there uh, on the thing. And make sure your channel's uploading. You you guys are, you know, putting a little effort in, you know, and make sure it's a you know, pretty good channel. Um, you know, if it's just like hacked together, I might end up finding something that's like pretty cool, you know, with like under a thousand subs. Uh, just put a little work in, man. Just like make sure, like try to be consistent on your uploads once a week, once every two weeks, once every three weeks. I look for something like that. Um, and then, you know, just some effort and put in a little bit of editing, chopping, things like that, just to try to polish your channel a little, just a little bit of work. And I will promise you, I will do my darndest to get you on here and help promote you because I want all of Airsoft on YouTube to get big and huge and every channel have like a million freaking subs. This would be the most awesome thing ever. I, if there's anything I can do to help it, that's what I wanna do here. So anyway, enough of that. Guys, don't forget, like I said, put them below along with your questions every single week so I can get them answered here on the show. Anyway guys and gals, until next week, go out, play some Airsoft, have some fun. Make yourself great again. Guys, this isn't a political patch. It's just cool. I just, like, come on. I know it's political, but it's not political. This is just, like, we all are a part of the Airsoft party, right? We all we all play on the same team. Speedsoft, Millsimmer, Skirmish Guy, whatever your thing, we're all a part of this this party. We all, we're not going to fight. We're all voting for the same team. Anyway, I got those out there. Like I said, uh, they're $9 shipped worldwide on that, so free shipping anywhere in the world. Um, see you guys next week. Until then, go out, play some Airsoft, have some fun, but no matter what you do, Call your freaking heads.